Hey everybody, today we're debating whether or not Islam is true, and we are starting right now with Muhammad's opening statement. Thanks so much for being with us, Muhammad. The floor is all yours. Thank you, James, and uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm here to put the position on why Islam is true. Uh, I'm going to approach the debate in a different tactic than what people usually understand of what Islam is, because people quickly run to the curriculum of Muhammad and uh, the way Muhammad uh, understood Islam and told the world about Islam. But I want to start with by saying that God indeed took Abraham as his best friend. Therefore, we can conclude that God, who created the skies and land and everything in between, accepted the actions and inputs uh, from Abraham, along with his sincerity and loyalty, and thus became the benchmark to everyone after him. If a man succeeds in a capitalistic market and, be, uh, and becomes affluent, people want to know their recipe so that they can achieve the same success. Abraham achieved an unpassed success as a human being. Therefore, one should learn from the way of Abraham to achieve the same success. The state of peace and submission that Abraham had, which led to his success both here and the hereafter, made such a butterfly effect in the history so that his children after him were inspired divinely and naturally to find that mentality and path that Abraham took. Be being accepted by God is gauged by how the natural, supernatural, seen and unseen world reacts to you along with your decisions. The mentality, the reasoning, and the approach that Abraham had is what submission is, and that is what Islam means. Moses, David, Jesus, and Muhammad all invited to that state of submission and became influential and were granted a clear authority over all opposing mentalities and teachings due to the input of those individuals in the world, which was multiplied and endorsed by God. Certain schools and curriculums came from their teaching, which is based on a building, uh, which is based on building a community to serve God. As God states in the Quran, the closest to Abraham are those who followed him, and this prophet, Muhammad, and the believers, that's the verse from the Quran. By definition, Islam is the submission to God and the will of God. When presented with choices, which we all are presented with choices on a regular basis, one is confident that the help of God himself, directly or through a medium, like an angel, or his stated words that were stated before would give them the correct decision. Therefore, the decision is not based on impulse, desires, or what the human wants. Rather, they make the decision based on what the truth is and what's best for them and what is around, all derived from God's wisdom. Stating that Muhammad's curriculum is the best curriculum in achieving the state of peace with God is proven by looking at what the Quran is teaching and then understanding the roots of what the Prophet, peace be upon him, derived from the Quran. A true submitter forbids immoralities and invites people to give favor, to go above and beyond expectations. As God states in chapter 98 on the Quran, they were not ordered anything except to serve God sincerely, to pray, and to give alms, or to give from what they were given. As you see, the instructions of submissions are very simple. Yet as someone who ponders upon themselves and the creation around them, a human is a communal being, driven by community and society. Because on an individual level, the human is lonely and weak. If the truth is that you are a small piece of wood and the world in front of you is a flame, you have the choice to put yourself to use or stand by and rot with no purpose. Mind you, the fire is burning with or without you. Islam is you believing the truth and doing your part. As God states in the Quran that God created life and death to test us on which one of us are the best workers or who's the one who's putting the most effort in the world that belongs to God. I can first foresee my opponent attacking Sunnism and the ideas that came with certain Sunni political leaders who take certain verses and certain sayings and twist them to further their personal agenda. A modern day example is the leader, uh, there's a sheikh, a leader of the sacred house in Mecca, Sheikh Saleh al-Talib. And mind you, to be a leader in such an honorable place isn't an easy achievement. By any means, this man was jailed due to a sermon he did criticizing how the Muslim world is allowing foreign liberal ideas to poison the community. The ruling party that claims to be Muslim jailed that man. The point that I'm making is unjust and evil leaders existed not only in the last century, but ever since the departure of Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, and twisted the religion and attributed things to God and his messengers, which are not accurate. There is sinnat al-Nabi, or the way of the tradition of the prophets, peace be upon them, and then there is sinnat Allah, the way in the tradition of God. The tradition of God is very simple to grasp. And in the spirit of real Islam, 
uh, I would like to warn the West of a simple concept because as a Muslim, it's our duty to warn. The tradition of God goes as follow. God gives a blessing to a nation and allows them to grow, conquer, expand, and pretty much inherit their surroundings. Said nation becomes so powerful, they begin to feel that they cannot be defeated. They attribute success and power from themselves rather than their creator. This arrogance is then shown by how said nation begins to oppress others and themselves based on lies and demonization tactics with sole purpose to sustain their size materialistically. They silence or kill anyone who reminds them of justice, honesty, awareness, intellect, reason, and proof, all the attributes that the Quran constantly reminds us of. They get a clear reminder and warning that those who oppressed before them are not around. And at this point, very little people believe while the majority just laughs it off. God saves the believers and destroys the said nation. As a person who is from the seed of Abraham and the nation of God, we have seen so many nations and ideas like the Pharaohs, Greek, Romans, Mongols, Persian, Byzantines, Nazis, Vikings, Ottomans, communists come and go over multiple millenniums. But the Jews, Christians, Muslims, and their belief in a single God, the God of Abraham and the way of Abraham, which is submission, did not perish. So America, who has been demonizing Islam for the last 20 years, might be here for now, but it won't be here tomorrow. Yet Islam and the idea of Islam is here now and submission will be here tomorrow. So in a world where the reality is that the survivor is the one who matters, Islam is always the survivor. Therefore, the ideology of Islam is not only true, but it's also king. And uh, that, that's all I have to say. You got it. Thank you very much for that opening statement from Muhammad. And we're going to kick it over to Apostate Prophet. But first, I want to let you know, folks, if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, we are a neutral channel hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. We hope you feel welcome no matter what walk of life you are from. And hey, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button as we have many more debates coming up. So for example, at the bottom right of your screen, King Crocoduck comes out of retirement to debate David McQueen creation evolution it's going to be a big one later this month you don't want to miss it hit that subscribe button and with that apostate prophet thanks for mitch for being with us the floor is all yours for your opening as well thank you so much james and uh thank you Mohammed, for that uh opening statement um i want to share my screen so i can show my presentation um which i do through here and through here i believe uh yeah okay <laughs> Is it visible? It is. Fantastic. So um, what do we mean when we say uh, Islam is true? As you can see on this picture, there are a lot of very enthusiastic uh, people down here that um, cling onto the Kaaba and want to follow the truth. Uh, people say that Islam is very simple. It is about believing in one God, in uh, Muhammad as a messenger and all of that. But uh, if we want to really find out what Islam is, we have to go further than just those ideas. It is true. In order to become part of Islam, you have to say there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. That's how you are officially a Muslim. And people often want to make it look like that's what that's what it is all about, but it's not really. There is so much more. For example, there are essential Islamic claims like that uh, Allah is the same God of the Bible, that Muhammad is the final messenger of Allah, that um, that Muhammad is a perfect guide, that the Quran is um, Sorry, I just got a little bit distracted here. The Quran is the direct word of Allah and that humans must follow Islam absolutely. Otherwise, they will uh, go to hell. And with these basic points, there's, of course, so much more. There's a lot more that uh, must be established in order to, to come to the conclusion that Islam is true. For example, based on these, if we look at everything that the Quran offers and that Muhammad offers, we, uh, we get the idea that everything in the Quran is true, according to the Quran. Uh, 
uh, that in the beginning there was only Allah and nothing else. Fine, we cannot really, um, you know, argue against that. His throne was on the water. This is what the Quran uh, explicitly says, and Muhammad says it in traditions too. So before Allah created the heavens and the earth, his uh, throne was above the water. We can discuss the details of that later in length. He then created and spread the earth, the earth above the water, which he created for us humans to walk on. He also put mountains into this earth, by the way, so that uh, the earth doesn't shake with us, as the Quran says. Then he created seven heavens above us. So, you know, he creates the earth for us, and then he creates seven heavens above us. If you're noticing that the background of, his lo of it looks like a very mythical, nice, flat earth with, uh, a, with strange skies and objects within the skies and a throne above it, don't be surprised. That's basically how the Quran describes the world. Uh, the sky is the lowest heaven. So the sky that we have above us uh, is, according to the Quran, called the nearest heaven or the lowest heaven or literally the heaven of the earth. Heaven and sky are used interchangeably. They are the same thing. That is the first heaven. This sky is, according to the Quran, a ceiling in which there are no cracks. That's how it's supposed to be because it is a solid, firm ceiling that Allah built above us. He holds up the sky. If you came until here and everything looks very laughable, very ridiculous, I have to tell you, I'm, this is exactly what the Quran tells you. Uh, he holds up the sky. So according to the Quran, Allah built the sky above us, and it is he who restrains the sky from falling down on us and with his mercy. And he also holds it up without pillars that we can see. This is the might of Allah, according to the Quran. Allah also sends rain down from the sky. Yes, in the past people had to find uh, explanations for certain things like uh, where rain comes from. Nowadays we know that you know rain is in a cycle of uh, you know evaporation, goes up, comes uh, down through the clouds again, uh, goes underneath the earth, some of it evaporates and so on. According to the Quran, Allah sends rain down so we can grow things on the earth. The sun and the moon follow each other. This is literally what the Quran describes. It says that the sun and the moon are constantly uh, following each other and Allah subjected them to us. According to the Quran, the sun also travels to a resting place. It, it goes indeed, it travels until it goes to a resting place or a stopping point, literally. The sun will also rise from the west one day. This is not in the Quran, this is in the Hadith, and the vast majority of Muslims believe in this. Uh, the hadith, in, in the Hadith, Muhammad says that the sun goes somewhere at night and comes uh, from the other side in the morning, and one day it will not come, but it will rise from the west, and that is a sign of the day of judgment. It doesn't make any sense if you actually think about it, but you're not supposed to think about it. According to the Quran, uh, stars are missiles or, and also an adornment. Allah created the stars in our nearest sky and also uses them as missiles in order to throw them at rebellious devils who try to go up and snatch uh, information that is sensitive between Allah and his angels. Allah created humans, fine. Allah created jinns. In the Islamic mythology, there are also, besides humans, other creations called the jinns who exist with us on this very earth that we are on and who at night or at a part of the evening go outside to snatch people's belongings and children and so on. Um, if that were true, you would have to be able to track that somehow or see things you know, float through the sky uh, without any explanation. Unfortunately, that is not really happening. Allah created humans and jinns just so they worship him, as the Quran says, and he does whatever he wants, but he also created many of uh, us for hell, and we are bound to go to hell, we have hearts with which we do not understand, and we are basically less than cattle, as the Quran says. He created death to test humans, despite creating us all just so we worship him. And he created us, he created death to test us despite the fact that he determined everything before he created us. Everything that we would do, everything that we would say, everything that we uh, would decide, our ev eventual destination, if we would go to heaven or hell, and so on. Despite all of that, Allah also gave us free will. Don't ask me how it works, it's the Quran says it so. 
But despite all of that, Allah also guides and misguides whom he wills. Yes, the Quran also says that. Another contradiction here. Allah cannot guide and misguide whom he wills while giving uh, humans free will. Humans cannot have free will while Allah, while Allah guides and misguides whom he wills. The Quran also says Allah rewards those who believe and Allah punishes those who disbelieve. But then it also says that nobody can believe unless Allah wants them to believe. Here again, you are supposed to make the uh, the connection here between the two. You are rewarded for believing, punished for disbelieving, but nobody can believe or disbelieve Allah unless Allah wants them to believe or disbelieve, which simply is incoherent and self-contradictory. Allah also is the same God who sent the Torah and the Gospel, which are books that are described in uh, the Quran, which, however, do not exist in their actual form, if you ask Muslims. Unfortunately, the Quran is entirely ignorant about the contents of the Torah and the Gospel, which are a big refutation of Islam on their own. Uh, it also claims that Jews and Christians were at some point guided, but then they went astray. It never explains how exactly and why exactly and when this happened. Uh, finally, everyone must convert to Islam. Uh, otherwise, we will, of course, go to hell. It is our eternal duty to convert to Islam unless we were created for hell. And uh, it is Allah who created us for hell. And we cannot believe unless Allah wants us to believe, in which case we just have no way out. If it doesn't make sense to you, you are correct. And finally, the Kaaba is the first house built for Allah. This is the Quran's claim, despite the fact that we have no history of the Kaaba until the emergence of Islam. Allah sent Muhammad as a final messenger, not just as a messenger. Final messenger in this sense means there is no more messenger after him and, and Muhammad is supposed to bring the end. The Quran also reminds us repeatedly that the end is very near. And finally, there is one uh, hadith, one authentic report according to Islamic sources to point exactly that out. According to the authentic reports, and this is testified by multiple sources, a person asked Allah's apostle, Muhammad, when would the last hour come? Thereupon Allah's messenger, Muhammad, kept quiet for a while. Then he looked at a young boy in his presence and he said, if this boy lives, he would not grow very old until the last hour would be established. So according to the authentic source here, Muhammad, when asked when the last hour will come, looks at a young boy in his presence and says, before this boy grows very old, the last hour will be established. I would not want to argue that this boy did not get old, that he is still getting old, that he still lives somewhere, but we just do not know. It is very obvious to me that this boy was a regular young boy in his presence. Muhammad made the claim that the world would end before this boy grows very old, and it simply did not happen, which is why there is no reason to trust Muhammad. Based on all of the incoherence that you have just witnessed, and based on uh, the very clear evidence here that Muhammad is not very reliable as a prophet, I conclude that Islam is false. And with that, I would like to say thank you and stay away from Islam. You got it. Thank you very much for those openings, gentlemen. And want to let you know, folks, if you haven't yet, if you have friends who love controversial debates like this, consider sharing this debate with them. You can click that share button down below, and that way you can help spread this neutral platform as our goal here at Modern Day Debate is to provide a level playing field for everybody to make their case. So with that, we're going to jump into the six-minute rebuttals. Muhammad going first. Thanks so much. Muhammad, the floor is all yours for six minutes. All right. Uh, I'm I'm going to address the Shahada at the end. OK, but I'm going to begin with all the other points that uh, Ridwan here made. And, and I appreciate that that picture you drew. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, you yourself admitted something about that picture. But uh, so now the first thing that you're doing is you're making a difference between what God is and what Allah is. Allah is just Arabic. As you know, Allah is Allah. So uh, God has many titles, names. Uh, which is Ar-Rahman, Al-Samir, Al-Khabir. They all start with Al. The ones that I said is the forgiving, uh, the hearing, uh, Al-Samir, uh, and the knowing. So if you're going to go with the point that Allah starts with Al, so the first word is the, La is God. So there's one God that's the same God that's feeding me and feeding you, Ridwan. So there is no difference between that God. Uh, the other point that you made was the definition of Islam. Uh, everyone isn't like their body is a muslim it's them as a human has to 
uh, pre, like they have to recognize the fact that they've submitted to God because there's a verse in the Quran that says, Aslama lillahu man fi samawati wa man fi al-ardi karhan wa taw'an wa kathiran min al-nas. Those are two verses that I put together. So the first verse is everything in the skies and the lanes have submitted to God. And then the other one is uh, everything in the skies, in the lanes have submitted to God willingly or unwillingly. And a lot of, oh, sorry, that one is يَسْجُدُ لِلَّهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَكَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ So the other verse is that um, everything in the skies and the lanes have already subjugated themselves to God and a lot of the humans, okay? So your definition of submission is lacking. The other thing is uh, everything in the tr Quran is true. You said that yourself. Uh, when God said that he put his throne on the water, is that where that's where he began creation? And, and there's many theories that are backed by natural philosophies or I mean like natural sciences that say that you know uh, all living creatures came out of water, as God said in in the Quran, uh, all living creatures came from water. So his throne starting on water kind of makes sense. And everything is fed from water. Everyone is, uh, and that's another verse that's in the Quran. Everything is uh, like. Everyone takes the same liquid, which is the water. Earth is not uh, the world, the word, sorry, one second. Oh, when God is talking about the skies and the land, he's not just talking about planet Earth. He's talking about the actual lane that we're walking on. So when when you're talking about when God created the Earth and the skies, he's not just talking about, I mean, the land and the skies. He's not talking just about planet Earth. He's talking about matter, and then he's talking about the, the skies at that point. Uh, you're right, but... You're making like you're 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 having a fallacy in a sense where that you know that the heavens and the skies are interchangeable in English, but in Arabic it's the same word, which is sama. Uh, the word of heavens is that's not accurate to what the Quran is saying because to us the heavens is the sky. So God created seven skies, and God is talking about the skies that's in front of you and the skies uh, on the land. Now your your argument about the flat earth, uh, God says in the Quran clearly, well um, ardu wa taha. The word Taha is coming from like back in Arabia uh, when Prophet Muhammad used to be around. They didn't have chickens like we had today. Like the idea of it, the chickens didn't reach the Arabian Peninsula. They had ostriches, ostriches that lived in uh, Saudi Arabia at the time of where Saudi Arabia is now. And their eggs was an oval shaped, like it's like the same shape as the earth. And they would say that egg is matruh, like that's the same word that they describe. That egg is the same way they describe the earth. And actually people at the time of Prophet Muhammad would question him. What do you mean like the, the, the earth is like a, a egg shape, like an ostrich egg shape, which now we can clearly see that it is. So that flat earth concept was is not accurate. Um, so when God is saying he holds up the sky, it's not he's not physically holding it up with his hands. If I can, by my mind, say, for example, hold this pen up with my mind, right? So I'm the one who's holding it, like, you know, just by just giving the thought, like, you know, this, this pen's hold it up and, and imagine my hand's not there. God's doing the same thing with the sky. He is consciously aware that the sky is being lifted up by him, but it doesn't necessarily need to be by his hand. He's a God. He can move you, like move me, from one side of this room to the other without anything being present for us to see physically. Um, so now when you're saying that, uh, sorry, I, I made a note, but I had to write so much because you put so many uh, points, which I would like to talk about them all. Um, the meteor. Okay, so the idea with the meteor, with people know that when the Big Bang happened, uh, the stars didn't necessarily start shooting right away, okay? So there has been a time until it's like a fuse, and when the star loses its energy, that's when it becomes a shooting star. And in one of the verses, the jinns that are hit by the stars, which those stars are predetermined when they're going to go. So God knew that the jinn is going to come at that point to listen to to the higher uh like to the angels to steal the world but that star was already predetermined that it's going to hit it was just the jinn was there at the right time at the right place for that star to hit him so and the point that i'm going to back up from the quran and you know this verse when they the jinns they said themselves said we used to be able to sit on the skies and listen and now those who are trying to listen are hit with a with a star so there was a point where they were able to listen until that timer diffuses up and now they're getting hit by stars so that they don't know what's going to come. They can't tell because the angels are able to foresee the future where the jinn couldn't. Now, the soon, uh, I would like you to see the verse when you're saying that the sun and the moon follows. Actually, there's a verse in chapter 30, 30, 36 that's saying that the sun cannot uh, outpace the moon. So like the sun cannot come close to the moon, which is very clear. Uh, as for the sun going from the uh, the sun coming out of from the west, that's a prophecy. Obviously, that didn't happen yet. But when it did happen, when it does happen at that point, it's too late for you. But scientifically, you could 
you, you we know that if the earth slows down in a certain speed at a certain rate like slows down its rotation at a very slow speed where people are not affected and falling left and right and earthquakes start. are not happening they can turn back and go the other way and the sun will start rising from the west so god with his ability can slow down the rotation of earth and start it the other way and then the sun rises from the west and at that point your point is moon uh missiles uh yeah the predestined uh, i wish i could remember what i wrote there uh unseen jinns are jinns cause you emotions and thoughts uh the ideas of them stealing things and in 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 the in going into the physical world at that point they have a bond with god hi um, sorry we will a have open dialogue so you'll have a chance to address some of these other points muhammad but just sure. to keep on schedule we're going to kick it over to apostate prophet for his six minutes as well go ahead apostate prophet the floor is all yours uh thank you so much well first off i want to say um so uh, the opening statement uh, that Mohammed made, um, I don't understand what it had to do with all with, uh, with uh, whether Islam is true or not. I think the opening statement was all about um, Abraham was a good submitter, liberalism is pretty bad, and Islam is pure, and nations are blessed, but America tries to vilify Islam, but religions like Islam uh, and stuff like that you know prevail i really don't understand where exactly the argument here is that islam is true and where exactly I mean, where, where on what premises on what arguments on what kinds of evidences uh do we build the idea that islam is true in that opening speech i'm trying to look if we have a if we, if we mix up the title of this debate but i'm seeing here that it says is islam true so I just don't really know what to respond to there. Uh, Islam is, uh, the, as, as a religion, the religion that Muhammad started in the seventh century, according to uh, Islam, it was started way before that. It was the first thing out there. Uh, according to us and everybody else, it is a religion started in the seventh century, uh, delivered in the Quran, which is, according to Islam, the authentic word of Allah, which he directly delivered through an angel to Muhammad. Um, and everything that you read in there in that text has to be true in order for islam to be true and um the tenets of islam are not just this is a good religion and you know others make try to make it look bad but it's not and so on so i, I really don't know what to respond to there but when it comes to um the the the, the rebuttal that muhammad just made um first off i would not agree that allah is the same god wait as... wait, wait, wait it's not fair you're talking about my opening statement Hold on. I can, I can do because whatever I want. It is technically the rebuttals. It's you can address whatever you'd like. Yeah. So there was never any agreement earlier in terms of what could be addressed. Yeah. So it, it's okay next time if you want to say what you want to specify what can be talked about. But otherwise, I've got to kind of let it let it fly. Yeah. No. No. Sure. I understand. All right. Uh, so I would not agree that that Allah is by any means the same God of the Bible or that he is uh, the God. First off, we have to establish what a, the God is. You can um, I can argue that there is something that created everything, but I would have to really you know define that Islam defines its own God, that God has a history, that God uh, says, according to the Quran itself, that he is the one who revealed the Quran and for whom the Kaaba was built, for example. Uh, Allah might mean El Elah, and it might have formed into Allah, which means the God, but Allah is also the distinct name of the deity of Islam, whereas the name of the uh, Abrahamic deity, for example, is not Allah. It is it, He actually has a name that is uh, the Tetragrammaton, Yodha which is uh, ya Yahweh, as we say today, or otherwise. Some, some people say Yehovah. Uh, the Islamic God has nothing to do with that God. The Islamic God simply adopts things from that God through Muhammad, who didn't understand Understand the biblical uh, religion at all. Uh, you said everything. Everybody is a Muslim, even those who don't know. I don't understand what the, that point is supposed to convey. The Quran says that only those who believe are Muslims, and those who are not Muslims will go to hell. Um, you, he, you said that uh, the verse about water is that the Quran merely points out that everything was created from water. Unfortunately, that's a modern uh, pseudoscientific interpretation, an eisegesis of the Quran. That's not what this is about. The Quran literally says that there was only water, Allah's throne was above it, then Allah created the earth, and then he created the heavens. Now think about it. 
if heavens refers not only to our sky, but to everything, to the entire universe, then think about this for a second. There is water, right? And Allah's throne is above the water. Allah then creates the earth for us and spreads it out. And then he creates the skies, meaning the universe, all the galaxies and planetary systems and so on. That doesn't really make sense <laughs> because the, the, the water is is what we have on this planet. Unless you want to say that there is some uh, eternal water that the entire universe is built on, which is just a very strange claim to make. Um, I said that the sun and the moon follow each other according to the Quran in Quran chapter 91, I believe. Not sure which one that was. I can check that later on. I should have this for somewhere here. Uh, he then said that the Quran clearly says that the sun and the moon cannot overtake each other. I, I agree. It does say that. I just don't understand how that refutes my point. My point is that according to the Quran, the sun and the moon follow each other they follow each other. In reality, they don't follow each other. The sun is at the center of our planetary system. Uh, the planetary system is built around the sun while the moon revolves uh, around the earth. So the sun and the moon not being able to overtake each other would not refute that point. On the contrary, it would just uh, support my point even further that the Quran paints a strange picture where the sun and the moon just you know are two balls in the sky that follow each other. Um, when it comes to the sun rising from the west, yes, I said it is a prophecy. According to a Muslim belief, according to Muhammad, the sun will one day rise from the west. But um, that, again, is distorted here by Muhammad. He says uh, that could happen when the uh, earth just stops spinning and then, you know, turns around. But we have a very, very clear report in which Muhammad explicitly describes that the sun actually every night goes to a place where it worships and asks Allah to rise again. And one day it will not be given given permission to rise and Allah will tell it to uh, go and rise in the West. That is Sahih Bukhari uh, 3199. And then that morning, the sun will actually literally go back and rise uh, from where it set, which is seconds. an actual physical moving of the sun, which is full of ignorance. And when it comes to the Quran being like shaped like an ostrich egg, the Quran literally just says Allah spread the earth. It has nothing to do with an ostrich egg. And uh, no Islamic scholar in the past interpreted it as such, except that we do it today. Thank you. You got it. And with that, we're going to jump into open conversation. Following that, we'll have short closing statements and then Q&A. This is a live debate, folks. So if you have an app questions, you can add me in the live chat with your questions or super chats. Go to the top of the list. And with that, thank you very much, gentlemen. The floor is all yours for open dialogue. Ridwan, I think you're failing on a point on what submission is and what Islam is. What is Islam to you? To, to you, is that just believing in God and the day of judgment or believing in that Prophet Muhammad is the, that's the only key to be a Muslim? Well, um, according to Islam, you have to believe in Muhammad, in Allah, in the Quran, in the last day. You have to basically follow the religion called Islam. That's what being a Muslim is. Okay, so when Moses said to his people, like, oh, just like be patient while Pharaoh is doing what he's doing to us and be patient and rely on God if you are Muslims. And the word that he said, in kuntum muslimun, if you are Muslims. So why would Moses call his people Muslims? Because, because, you know, what because I'm, the point that I'm making before, before you give me your, your understanding, the point that I'm making is that Muslim, the word Muslim has a standalone meaning prior to Muhammad. Is, do you agree there? I, I completely agree with that. But according to the according to to Islam, uh, Abraham himself, the, the Quran has a verse which says that Abraham was neither a Christian nor a Jew. He was a righteous uh, submitter. He was a Muslim. The word Muslim yeah. is one who submits, uh, which perfect. comes from submitting to Allah. But within the context of Islam establishing itself as a religion from then on, somebody who is a Muslim is someone who submits to the true religion. Okay. Anybody so, else so now, not. So, so now I want to take you back to your point that you talked about the Shahada. Because in chapter 29 of the Quran, uh, it starts Alif Lam Mim, Ahzab al Nasu and Yatruku and Yakulu Amena, Wahumla Yuktanun, while Kat Fatana Ladina Min Kablihim, Fali Alaman Allah, Ladina Sadaku, Yalaman al Kafirum. So, which uh, Ladina Sadaku, Ladina Kazibun. Uh, Sorry, I'll have to pull it up to say properly, but I like in context, it's saying that did the people who said that they believe. They say that they believe. Did they think that they're going to be left and not tested like we tested those that are before them? So, like, obviously, the Jews say they believed. The Christians say they believe. And now we have the 21st century Muslims that say they believe. But God's very clear 
when we're saying that if we're just going to make the hypothesis that the whole Quran is truth. So anyone who's going to say he believes either as an individual or as a community, they're going to be tested the same way those that were tested before them. So now if you look at the, before you interrupt me, if you look at the Moses, uh, I mean the Jews, they have the Torah and then they have the Talmud and they use the Talmud to, to explain what the Torah is, but the Talmud has more contradictions than the Torah. And now if you look at the Christians, for example, the Christians have two things that happen also with the Muslim community. A, Paul the apostate came and he wrote a bunch of stuff and he attributed it to Jesus, which like it doesn't make sense for what Jesus would say. And wait, sorry, let me get to the point that I'm going to make and then I'll give you your time. You asked for six minutes to talk. Let me just finish the point. So now we have Paul the apostate that, that, that wrote was a actually, bunch of stuff. That was actually part of our uh, format, with the rebuttal, which you also had. I don't understand why we're talking about this right now. Okay, well, well, I'm trying to explain to you where the truth is in the Quran and what a Muslim is. So God already said that he's going to test us like we were tested before us. The Jews uh, failed because they put another things and attributed it to God, which was not true. Okay, and then the Christians did the same things. They have attributed books that were not from God to God, right? And it's very difficult to show them their wrongdoings from a Muslim point of view. But the Muslims are fell into the same traps, the same traps such as Okay. And these are the traps that you picked up on. It doesn't mean that Islam is not true. It means what they're learning is not accurate to what's the teaching or what is being revealed in the Quran. I'll give you an example. When someone draws Prophet Muhammad, right, the whole world goes crazy from the Muslim nation and they go stand up for Muhammad, which is rightfully so. They have to. Okay. But if someone sits there and talks about Noah for an hour and a half, the Muslim community is quiet. Yet the Quran tells you do not distinguish between the messengers. So that's, that's a test from God that they're failing in. And why? Because they're falling into the same categories where Christians sit there and they, okay, the, they, they in talk the, about Jesus the, the whole time. We are in the open discussion section. We are supposed to have an open discussion back and forth, not give uh, long speeches. I just don't understand okay. what in the world does this have to do with the topic? What? Wh wh why are you bringing this up? Uh, I, I really because don't get you, it. Because, because How I'm does going this... back to the point, what is submission to you? What so is submission? Why, why are we talking about that? Because I'm saying what people are doing in the 21st modern century is not aligning to what I, I don't care about. I don't is. care about that. I don't but care that's about, what you, I, I never brought it up. That's what you're calling as a Muslim. That's what you're labeling as a Muslim. I'm telling you, Jesus. Okay, was but a I, I never brought was it Muslim. up. Abraham was a Muslim and Muhammad was a Muslim. So the people that we're doing in the 21st century, what you're thinking is representing Islam. I'm showing you that it doesn't by the Quran. Okay, I don't understand the point. When did I ever say that Islam is false because uh, of the Muslims today? I, I'm no, not. It has saying, nothing to do with the topic at all. What you're defining as Islam is what started in the seventh century with the school of Muhammad, which in okay. the first 200 years was the best school ever that the world ever seen. You could see, you could see the progress. You could see the singularity. There was a nation from Spain all the way to Afghanistan. That was one big nation that succeeded, but like every other curriculum that came before it, corruption took apart and politics took apart and it, and it fell apart. That's normal. That's how God tests us to see if we were actually being honest or not. So, so the, the whole thing of your whole concept of trying to attack what people perceive as Islam is in 21st century based on what happened after the 70th century, that doesn't explain what submission is. Again, okay. Ridwan, what is submission? Uh, did the what entire, is my entire, my entire point to you, all my arguments, all my premises, which I basically really, I, I didn't even put into, I mean, I, I didn't establish like a whole series of, uh, you know, premises and, and, and arguments and, uh, and therefore this and that i made it very simple i brought up things that the quran says things right. that the hadith say not nothing that i said nothing that i presented here is just stuff that muslims randomly picked up and that is not found in the fundamental scriptures of islam so i am arguing that islam based on all the ideas that it offers in the quran and the hadiths is false because it says a lot of things that are self-contradictory or simply untrue it is as simple as that and People sometimes tell me that I'm doing a very uh, that I'm doing a very hard job. I, I don't think it's a hard job at all. I think I'm doing something very simple. I'm pointing out that the Quran and the Hadith have a lot of nonsensical claims, which can be pointed out by very simply by anybody. And I'm just doing that very simple job because nobody wants to do it. And you are now here talking about how my image of Islam is wrong or of Muslims is wrong yeah, because, because I'm interpreting. But, but what, does it, what, what does it? What does it matter? Is. What submission is? Because because we're talking of Islam is true. I'm not talking about 21st century Sunnism and what people preach about Islam. I don't care you about what... 21st century Sunnism. So I care Islam. about the fundamental sources of Islam, okay. the Quran, so... the Hadith, and the beliefs presented therein. Do you agree that uh, I, I, I say that if those are wrong, then Islam is false. If those were all true, Islam could be true. This has nothing to do with defining. But you're, like, it goes back to the point where you, you're making contradictions 
conditions of you not understanding the topic at hand because you do not know what submission is. So, for example, when you're saying that people that God is creating people to go to hell, it's not God created people to go to hell. God created the people and gave them a choice. And they're going to hell by their own choices. They chose to be criminals. Okay, so there is free will at play, but because you have free will, God is giving you the correct way to deal with that free will. So Islam is all about the proper choice to make at the right time when the decision needs to be made. So when the ultimate question is, is there a God? Islam is giving you the answer. Is If someone's upsetting me, Islam is giving you an answer. Islam is about being like, we don't need to debate what honesty is, do we? We don't need to debate what awareness is. We don't need to debate what justice is. And this is literally what submission is, is to submit to those things that further you in life. So but, but, your idea good, good, good Islam, topic. Good topic. Uh, I want to ask you a question. So I don't. I don't believe. I don't believe in Islam, right? I, I. I firmly believe that Islam is false. If I die the way I am right now, believing that Islam is totally false and ridiculous, actually, yeah. then I would be by Islamic standards uh, condemned to hell and punished there in brutal ways. That's what the Quran says. It's undeniable. Correct. But what, why? Oppression. Why do you? Why do you think? Why do you think I don't believe in Islam? Well, because you're saying, well, the fact that you're sitting here causing doubt. Okay, but why do I not? Why do I not believe in Islam? You don't because you took those choices upon your own. Okay, but why did I take those? Why did I make the choice not to believe in Islam? Because you put yourself in the circumstances to cause doubt, and when you're causing doubt, you're more likely to fail. So I put myself in the position to cause doubt. I had doubts, but right now I don't right. believe in Islam, right? So I firmly right. believe that Islam is not true. I came to the conclusion that Islam is not true, right? Did you do that conclusion on your own? What does that even mean? Did, did you make that decision on your own? Did you come up to that solution by your own? Yes. Did someone force you as, to, as, a, on as, a, as a human, I questioned. It didn't make sense to me. And I concluded, no, this, is, this, this can't be true. So Islam is false. Okay. And, and, God, and God did say to Moses that he's making a test, uh, that the day of judgment is coming. And I'm, I'm, I'm about to, like, I'm going to make it seem like it's completely concealed. So you witnessed upon yourself today. Like if I'm writing your story, Ridwan today said that he witnesses that judgment day is not true. Islam is not true. And that's the end of the story. So you okay. made that decision. So now when judgment day does come around, okay, you made that decision. Why would you blame God for the decision that you had? Pretty simple. Uh, doesn't the Quran also say, as I presented in the, I, I think that that was actually a very, uh, you know, big central part of, of what I was arguing right. there. Uh, I, I said that Allah created humans. He determined from the very beginning before he created them what they right. would do. He created humans right. just so they worship him and he created many of right. them for hell. One, they cannot worship? understand. So, what's the word so, worship? So, so, I, so I want to ask you here, um, Allah creates me. This Wait, before from we the, carry on, let's get to this point because determines, the determines from the is important that's a change of topic what's actually worship no no what's worship you're talking about god created you to worship what's worship to you what in, in uh, Arabic, if, what's that mean? if 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 there was a god if there is a god if allah was true it would be to acknowledge and to serve him or to you know uh so what's the to, word to, worship to worship well, I don't know. What, 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 what do you want from me? It's worship. Okay. worship. Can, can Acknowledge, the acknowledging and talking to him, submitting to him. That's it. Uh, no, okay. Submitting to God is one point. Serving God is, is what worship is. So okay. as I, I mean. said, in my opening statement, God makes a difference between ibadah, prayer, and giving charity. He said they were only ordered to serve me, to pray, and to give charity. So as you can see, the prayer in, in, in giving charity is separate to what actual worship is. You're a human being on earth. This earth is obviously in front of you. You have a duty on earth to make this world a better place. If you okay, don't, this you're is, a criminal. This has nothing to do with that's, the topic. But that's literally what Islam is. Like, Islam this has is about nothing to do with the topic. You're, you're getting into no, these uh, we, we, No, 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 brother. You, you, like... want me, you want me to define, you, you're defining Islam in a different way. You want to go into a political sense? Okay, you, you just told me, you just told me that if I don't believe in Islam, then I will go to hell. I asked because you, you, and you, and you confirmed that, right? Correct. So why in the world are we talking about the semantics of what worship is? I'm telling you, if I do because not believe in Islam, Islam today, is. if but I don't believe in Islam, what Islam is. Let's okay. give a posse, or have it go ahead, a posse. We'll give you a couple of minutes just to be sure there's no interruptions. I today have the choice to believe in Islam or not right? Believing in Islam means I acknowledge that Islam is the truth, that this religion is true, that Allah exists, that the Quran came from him, that Muhammad is his messenger, and all that uh, stuff. 
I choose, however, not to do that. I say Islam is not true. The Quran is not the word of Allah. There is no Allah. Muhammad is not his messenger. The things said in there are not the absolute truth. It's wrong. There are there are just there are two options here. I believe in it and I worship and I become a Muslim as much as I can, or I reject it because I simply do not believe in it. We don't have to now establish what worship means, what submission means, and all that. Because this is what we are talking about. The semantics are entirely irrelevant. But do wait, I believe you, how, in how it you, or do I you, not believe in it? One second. Well, how just give how you reject it? I'm, I'm done. I'm done. It's fine. I'm done. I'm done. It's fine. Go ahead. I'm saying like, how are you rejecting something that you don't understand? So you're rejecting the Quran, you're rejecting Islam, you're rejecting faith, you're rejecting the day of judgment. If those are concepts you don't understand, you're rejecting purely on ignorance at this point. That's, I have no idea what that has to do with the topic. And again, I just don't believe that these things are true and, line, and therefore I'm a disbeliever. That's it. Yes, you, you are a disbeliever, but because mm -hmm. you have not yet understood what the concept of Islam is. You don't understand the concept of Islam. If God, when God told when God told Abraham, submit, he said, I submit to you. I, I, are, I agree are Christians you. Muslims? Uh, if, a, if, if a Christian stops saying lies about God and saying that three equals one or that Jesus is God. So, okay, that so, point, he's so a short answer, short answer. No, they're not Muslims. Are Jews Muslims? A, no, no, no. Brother, it's not a short answer. Even it is a very short a answer. Point. Christians but, but, do not do these things that you just said. Therefore, they are not Muslims. Very simple. But, but brother, there is, a, there is a verse in the Quran that states multiple times. From the people who are Jews and Christians and, and, a, uh, and a different sect of uh, Abrahamic religion as well, those that believed in God and did righteous deeds, so they worked correctly, okay? They, they caused, they, they did good for the world. They don't have fear, nor are they uh, troubled on the day of judgment. I'm okay. not sitting here to say that if Christians, Christians all... if Christians did that, they would no longer be Christians. They would be Muslims. So the question, are Christians exactly. Muslims, is answered very simply by saying, no, they are not Muslims. We don't have to go into the rest but, of it. But it... The second question, are Jews Muslims? Okay, so what there is a difference between a Muslim and a mu'min. So there's Jews that are Muslims, but they're not Muslims, they're not believers. But we can't call them what we what you're defining as the seventh century Islam because they haven't accepted the prophet. Because if a prophet comes from God, you have to accept him. But they're still submitted. Because, like, for example, there's a verse in the Quran that says, Don't say that you're a believer, say that you've submitted. And then when the faith comes in, then you're a believer. So it's yeah. the same thing with the Jews. They've submitted to the will of God, but they haven't believed completely. It's like take, for example, someone who's a bodybuilder. I can technically be a bodybuilder if I go to the gym and do one exercise and take the protein. But someone who's more dedicated, he has a better body. And it's the same thing with submission in Islam. Someone who's more dedicated in serving God is closer to the truth. Okay, it's not all Jews are going to hell. Not all Christians are going to hell. If someone is dedicating themselves to God and couldn't because of their programming, and God is someone who's aware, he can allow him to go to heaven. I don't think all Jews and Christians. Okay, I, this day I don't understand that has anything to do with the topic. Um, so, Again, I go to the point. You don't know what submission is. You don't know what Islam which is. Which has nothing to do with the topic. Um, if, if you are, if, l l l let's say that we are that we disagree about the uh, the specific t uh, details of what exactly submission is. I don't really care, honestly. Uh, we, what we are talking about is if you believe in this religion that we have or don't believe in this religion that we have. If you believing in this religion that we have meaning not means acknowledging its message and not believing in it means not acknowledging but in fact rejecting its message denying its message i deny its message simply because i have a brain which allah created according to the islamic uh, religion with which i came to the conclusion that this religion cannot be true according to the islamic religion according to the islamic tradition and uh, the quran it was allah himself who determined way before he created me that i would with the capabilities that i have which are completely 100 percent in allah's control come to the conclusion that all that Islam is not true. If I then go to hell for this, then that means I basically go to hell uh, 
based on what Allah decided for me before, long before he created me. Whether I make a choice in this life or not is entirely irrelevant because the choice that I make was by definition necessarily also determined by and decided by Allah long before he created me. Everything that I do was necessarily decided by Allah. So actually everything is pre-programmed by God. Everything has a predetermination by God, a predestination. Oh, sorry, everything is predetermined by God and you made your choice. So, for example, for me to uh, to 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 like put my hand in a fire, I get burned. Okay, I can't say God burnt me, right? Because I am the one who put my hand in a fire. You chose to take the route that you had. You always, in any decision you have, you have two choices. You are the one who personally first took the choice to saying to cause self doubt to yourself that the Quran is not true. And instead of fighting that doubt, what you did, you gave into that doubt. Okay, so the well, next well, step, let's think so of putting your hands so in the fire. Step, Let's say you put your hands in the fire, right? Right now, imagine right. that you are s s standing there and you put your hands in the fire, literally. Let's just talk about it literally. But you have a warning you... before you put it there. Okay, right okay, okay. It burns it before okay. you touch it. Okay, you put your hand in the fire, right? When you put your hand in the fire, is this something that Allah decided before he created you or is it something that is completely outside of Allah's decree? No, God decided that you have the hand. God decided what you are able to do with the hand. God decided what fire is. God put the fire in front of you. Your decision, that connection, that's 100% up to you. But God already programmed that if you do that connection, this is what's going to occur. Think of it so, as a so pre-programmed computer. Not, so Allah did not decide that I would put my hand in the fire. God, God didn't order you. God allowed you. There's a difference. I, God I, didn't, I, ask, you, I ask you again. So I'll, uh, you're saying Allah did no, not decide decision. that I would put my hand in the fire. That's your decision. That's <laughs> that your you're... decision. God, God, God decided to allow you. Okay, and can you, you made the decision to go with it. Okay, can you answer my question? Did Allah decide that you would put your hand in the fire? Yes or no? No, that's your decision, your action. So Allah did not decide it. That means Allah did not no. decide everything that would happen uh, before he created everything. No, no. That means, that means you're, deny, you're denying the fundamentals of Islam and denying one of the pillars of the Islamic no, faith. You don't, you don't understand what I mean by God. Yes, exactly. One second, I'm saying to you, you're not understanding what I mean by God didn't decide it. God didn't order you, nor did he push you to put your hand in the fire. God decided what happens when the fire touches you. God decided that you have the ability to touch the fire. You made the connection on your own. So when you go to hell, you have nobody to blame except yourself. It's that's not, not God putting your hand in the fire. No, it that's, is. that's not it what is. I asked, you're, however. You're, I, didn't, I didn't ask that Allah You're command. asking if God... I didn't. So I didn't ask. It, I didn't ask if Allah uh, programmed it or whatever it is. Did Allah decide that I would put my hand in the fire? No. Was that was that a decision that He made? Was it determined by no. Him? Yes or no? No. No. That means that, that that means that Allah did not determine everything, which contradicts with the uh, with, with <laughs> your decision with with, 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 decision. The, with, with the with the pillars with the bases well, of Islamic wait, wait, faith. Wait, 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 wait. That, I, that I means... think you have a problem. I think you have a problem with an assumption. And, yeah. and a determination. So God already determined the world around you, but yeah. God already assumed every single action that you're going to make. And yes. It's a godly assumption, so it's never going to be wrong. He so determined he put the it. fire in front of. He put the fire in front of you. He didn't determine it. He. It's like a sandbox in front of you. Okay. He's the one who determined the laws that are around you. He determined the the the, the programming that's around you. But you're doing. You're the one who's putting the input. Well, there's a verse. Oh well, Masha Allahu ma'abadnahum. So if God willed, we wouldn't have been worshipping the angels. They're just making an incorrect assumption. They're going to the, to, to, they're connecting the dots incorrectly. You have a free spirit. You have a free will. There's a programming in front of you. Whatever road you take, the end result is no. Because okay. people before you took the same road and went in the same path and took the same result. You I'm sorry, but this the road is simply... Of humility. You're simply distort, is, you're distorting your own religion. You're distorting I'm your not, own, your own, your own book. The Quran, the Quran says that Allah determined everything. He knows everything. He wrote down everything. Yeah, he, he decided he everything. Gonna... And uh, Muhammad says, according to the Hadith, that before he created us, he wrote down and decided our aftermath, decided what we would do, whether we would become uh, wicked or uh, believers, whether we would go to hell or heaven. And the Quran even says, this is actually one of the, one, one of the pillars, one of the, uh, pillars of faith of iman you have to believe in that in order to be, to be a muslim according to the islamic tradition and the quran says let me let me quote it in fact the quran says um that nobody will believe unless allah wants them to believe uh, it is it is not for uh one of you to believe unless allah wants unless allah wants you to believe this means wills 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 in share in share it's not once 
That is that is so, literally the same thing. If you no, say if you say wanting to do something, that's that's in share. No, in share means that the person put the right input. So God, because God said that if someone puts X input, he becomes a believer. It's not someone who's a criminal becomes a believer. They have to put the X inputs. So you have the choice to put in the pot what you're gonna eat. You can't put in the pot uh, like uh, you know apples and then have a blueberry pie. And that's what that means. God wants you to be a believer, then he's going to put you in a situation for you to be a believer. And it's up to you to decide to do it or not. And everyone had that same choice. We gave them the, the, both roads. So you, you're in front of you is always two roads right now. And, and I promise you this would want if you if you think about it, contemplate and find a reason to believe in God and you go into the path of repentance, which I think is going to be very difficult. But but God is willing to guide you. So I mean, so, so let's establish, you, yeah. so let's establish this. Uh, I don't believe in Allah. I don't believe in Islam because I came to the genuine conclusion that Islam is definitely not true. Right. I, with my capabilities, with everything that Allah uh, created for me, with my environment, my upbringing, my brain. The, the 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 mind that I have, the intelligence, everything that I have, I came to the conclusion that Islam is definitely not uh, not true. In fact, I am so convinced by it that I find it an important mission on my behalf to go out here and to tell people, hey, Islam is nonsense, guys. It is false. It's definitely not true. Look, so. With, all, with everything Allah has given me, I came to the conclusion that Islam is false simply really because I don't believe that it is true. But I will be punished for that in the right. afterlife because I genuinely could not believe that Islam no, is Ridwan. true. So that means, that means I will be punished for yeah. being ignorant, for being stupid. 100%. Yep. Or for, for being for being blind, one of those things, which, by the way, are entirely out of my control, because no. I am purely the creation of Allah, and He no, it's not exactly out of control. my environment, my upbringing, my brain, and so on. No, because you're being sitting in hell, thinking to yourself, you know what? God gave me fame. God gave me money. God gave me X and X. What did I do with it? I went started. Uh, I, I went on the chain of bigotry. I went on the chain of hate. I hated what God revealed to other people. I didn't think it was from God. So you made those decisions on your own. It's so not about. I, so it's I, not I, about I spread hate against the things that God did because I didn't believe that they no, were you, from God. No, you spread hate. You spread hate against people who believed in God. You, no, I, you, you first first off, that's a lie. Uh, but secondly, even if I did do that, it would you be do that. spread hate. But secondly, it would it would be that it would mean that I spread hate against something that I believe to be definitely false, not something that I think that I know is right. But exactly, it, the, the that you made the decision that it's false. It doesn't mean yeah. that you're saying it's the truth. Yeah, did I willingly saying? did I willingly do something evil? Yeah, at that point you're willingly doing it. <laughs> did I willingly do something that I know to be evil? Yeah, because you took the choice on your own. That's... You were just not you're not empathetic enough to see the butterfly effect that you're going to do. Okay, because every but... choice you make has an effect. That would mean I have to know that it is evil what I'm doing, which means I have Correct. to know that Islam is the truth, and which is why I am spreading, uh, you know, discontent or hate or whatever it is against it, uh, knowing that it is evil to do so. But we, are, we just established that I clearly believe that Islam is false and nonsensical and dangerous. So it's, that it's means a nonsensical when I, argument when you're sitting there insulting That means when it. I refute Islam, when I refute Islam or mock it or say it is dangerous, mm -hmm. that I am Brother, not doing something that I... You don't understand. Nothing to do How with you're the topic. refuting something you don't can understand. You, can, you please, can, you, can you please let me make the point? Yeah, that means ahead, that means point. I am refuting something which I clearly do believe is not good. So you're I am not knowing something you don't understand. Exactly. That means I am not doing something knowingly evil. I'm doing something without knowing that it is evil. That means because I am you not take doing the evil. time to listen. It's not, it's not, here is here. You the just contradicted is, yourself so many times no, no, within no. those within that one minute. No, yeah, the contradiction is coming from you not be not being able to listen. Your problem here is not the comprehension It's being to able to listen to someone else. You're making an incorrect choice. Someone's telling you you're making an incorrect choice, but you don't like to be told you're wrong. So you keep pushing along the same road until the pain hits you. And then you're going to think about it again. So it's, I don't like killing you, people the, they tell me that I'm wrong, but <laughs> But what do you mean? War existed before Prophet Muhammad and after Prophet Muhammad. War is something that's normal in the day in everyday life. Yeah, so aside we, we from that point, we don't, we don't need it today. But what let is me, Islam? Let me, let oh, me we don't need war today. 
we don't wait, need wait, wait, wait. we don't need war over people telling you that you okay let's talk about some prophecies like let, let me but, ta- but, let me tell you about some prophecies okay. in the quran be, 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 before we move on from that let me Go quickly ahead, please please let me speak for uh i'm completely put over again from that, from that part. okay uh let me speak until i'm done here just a few seconds not more than a minute do you want six uh, more minutes? i just i just want you to reflect upon that Oh, you are offended because I uh, stuck to my agreed debate format. Wow, amazing! So, how am uh, I offended? I'm asking you if you six, if you want six more minutes, man. Like, it sounds it sounds weird. I thought you were offended about that. I don't know. It's just the no, second man, time I, you bring it up. Listen. So, but, so look, because... look. So, okay, whatever. So, um, I, I I asked you. I clearly established that I don't believe in Islam because I know that it is false, right? I sincerely do not believe that it is true. That means that whatever Islam tells me is good, I don't think that it is good. Whatever Islam tells me is evil, I don't think that it is evil because I don't believe that Islam is true. I am 100% convinced that Islam is false. Whether I understand it or not is entirely besides the point. Now Wait I sit one. here. No, I'll, I sit I'll, give me, I'll, I'll bring it to you in a different way. Didn't, we just, to... didn't we just agree that you would pl- let me talk until I'm done for less than a minute? I sit here and uh, attempt to refute Islam, mock Islam, and point out that it is dangerous. But we just established that I don't know that it is true. Yet when I asked you whether I am doing something that I know is evil, you told me yes. How in the world does this work? If I don't know that it is true, and if I don't know that, that dissing it is evil, then how am I doing something that I know is evil? Because put put the concepts of Islam to the side. Do you know what the hurt principle is, for example? Nothing to do with the morality that Islam presents to us. I would want to ask my question, so yes or no. Do you know what the hurt principle is? You mean the harm principle? The harm principle, sorry, sorry. The yes, harm principle. Sure. Yes, I know. Right? Okay, so Islam takes a next step. It's not about the harm principle. It's not just about causing harm. It's about oppression, okay? So you are oppressing more than you're helping. Yeah. That's why you are a criminal. It's got okay. nothing to do with 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 Islam, because as I said, there's people who are Muslims before Quran, before Muhammad, but you're not understanding that concept. You're you're going with why Islam is dangerous. Islam, like Prophet Muhammad's school of philosophy, is to eliminate temptation, while Jesus's school of philosophy was to resist temptation. In the long run, eliminating temptation is a better be- better approach, because if you have a bar in your city, for example, if you have a bar in your city. And if you take the style Jesus took, where you're going to go sit with the people who are drinking and trying to help them and trying to show them, if you're not as uh, certain and sure as Jesus, in the long run, you're more likely to follow the person who's who's hurting you, okay? But in Muhammad's school of philosophy is that, no, we need to remove this bar from our community because this bar is going to hurt our community. It's got nothing to do about like that person's individual. It's about the whole community. And I don't know what your like full-time job is. And I, I, I don't mean, mean this as a, as a hit, but there's certain things you like, learn in life and it's how to manage a team, for example. So managing three people is one thing, but managing a whole community is a whole different animal on its okay. own. So you're sitting there laughing, Mom, but you put yourself Mom, in a, in a Mom, political position. You're going to have to take means that for you, it's not going to make sense. But he's okay, with, 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 all the res- with all due respect, I really don't think that you understand to um, that you that you understand the logic here, that you understand what is being said. I really don't think that you can actually respond to what is being said because you don't understand it. My Ridwan, sincere suggestion. What you're my saying, sincere, what you're saying, sin- what you're saying is that using the my Quran sincere my sincere suggestion you, would be my sincere suggestion would be after this debate, if you want to find somebody who is not a Muslim, not biased, who is a probably a, a, a professor of I don't know debates of uh, philosophy, sit down with them, show them this debate, and tell them, uh, did I uh, understand him or not? What was the problem? And, and let them let Ridwan, them criticize you. They will tell you one thing: you are not responding Ridwan, to anything that I. If, because you're not if I repeat words. your if I repeat your point of view, would that mean I understood you? Uh, you did not repeat my point of view. But look at this. If uh, I, no, wait, 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 wait. Answer me. If I repeat the point of view that you said, no, I just let I, you. I just let you speak for a long time because I just wanted to. It. Just because so, I wanted to. So now I you're wanted just to making you speak. Gentlemen, if are I, just we uh, we I, have to have one second. I just want to jump in because we have to. Have, if both of you are speaking at the same time, then they can't hear either of you. So I just want to be sure. We can. We just gave AP a good amount of time, so we can give you about a minute, Muhammad, to respond, and then we'll go back to AP. Okay, so AP is saying that my 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 way of judging if someone is evil or not is through the Quran. If he's a person that rejects the Quran, rejects Islam, right? So him being 
like rejecting the idea, why would he think that what he's doing is evil? Because he's not putting himself on the same standard that I'm what I'm, what I'm seeing the world as to be. Is that correct? I don't know if that's correct at all. I'm completely lost for words right now because I have this is the weirdest debate that I've ever had. Because I'm coming to you from a different angle. No, you're, you're, you're not. expecting you're... me to sit here and talk about Sunnis. Oh my God. Uh, okay, so let let, let let me let me say this again. So you said to me that um, when I established that I don't believe it is evil to criticize Islam, but I asked you whether I am doing something that I know is evil. You said yes. Then uh, when I said, how can I know? Uh, how can I do something that I know is evil if I don't even know that it is evil because I don't agree with its ideas and its concept? You t suddenly started telling me about how Islam is more than just the harm principle. It says not to oppress and not to do this and that. Okay, fine, I, every, everything wonderful. But you only define uh, criticizing Islam and thereby oppressing people as evil because it is your Islamic religion, your Islamic philosophy, which teaches you that it is evil to oppress uh, people by criticizing Islam. If I don't agree with your philosophy at all, if I think it is complete nonsense and we don't need that, then how in the world do I knowingly do something that is evil by criticizing Islam when in my philosophy it is not considered evil to criticize something that is false? Okay, so at that point, the point that we're, we're at a, that we don't have a common ground is, is you're saying that Islam is false. Yes. So you don't think it's an evil for you to criticize Islam. Exactly. Even though Islam itself is saying you that is an evil, right? Yes. Yes. So so the concept here that the key word and, and I don't know too much about you Ridwan, but are you a believer of any religion or are you no. an atheist? I'm an atheist. You're an atheist. So in your world of view, and I apologize and I and I I, I want to be as kind as possible. An atheist doesn't have the concept of evil or good anyways, because to you, from what I understand, an atheist has is we're just a bunch of atoms that are fucking put together. And here we are kind of thing. So like the concept of evil isn't something that you can compute, nor can you calculate it, nor does it have empirical values. It's not something that you can measure. So the concept of, of, of evil and good isn't something that you can measure. Well, fantastic. Just because purely, purely because you're you're an atheist. Fantastic. Uh, and, number one, and don't take offense in that. Is that is that your answer? Okay. Me? Okay. Number one, uh, being an atheist says nothing about whether you have a concept of evil and good or not. You can be an atheist, which means you don't believe in God, while following uh, different philosophies, which may or may not have a concept of good and evil. Uh, so that is entirely besides the point. But thank you, secondly, for making my point also. If I, uh, according to you, don't have a concept of good and evil, then that means that I cannot know that it is evil to criticize Islam and to vilify Islam and to tell people that Islam is dangerous so how in the world can i be doing something that i know is evil and therefore be punished for doing something that i know is evil because now there's certain things that we don't need to debate which is honesty right so there's nobody talking here about like you know debating what honesty is we all know what honesty is it's being honest to yourself so if you are debating something that's hurting a group of people right like hurting them onto a point where you're getting death threats which i could see why you, you understand so that means you're you're causing a lot of pain by you throwing the first stone wow so, wow wow so, so 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 let me get this straight i should know that what i'm doing is evil because i'm criticizing a religion so much that i get death threats which should show me that i know that it is uh, oppressive and bad but you think uh, when people preach Islam, including that Islam should be imposed on us or that apostate should I, be I executed. Took it to the, I, I that took that it to the highest point. Executed. Hey, there's no, th and that th is there's no point. Hold on, just wait, hear wait, one wait. at a time. Uh, uh, Ridwan, wow. you're saying that Islam, so for a Muslim to be a Muslim, he has to kill you for apostasy? No, I have never, true? I have never, literally never said that and don't believe that. I've never so, proposed the idea. It has nothing to do with this at all. So, so to you, to, hold on, you said that Muslims have to kill apostates, right? No, I didn't say that. Never then said make that. your point again. Okay. Make, make, the, make the point about apostasy one more time. 
Muslims believe, many Muslims believe that Islam should be imposed, that Islam should be turned into a state religion, that Islam should uh, play a role in, in society, which means it necessarily interferes with our lives. And according to the Islamic tradition, uh, it is also imposed that apostates, meaning people who leave Islam, should be put to death. The details of it are uh, debated among Muslims. Uh, okay. If, if we, if by your standard, so why, why, we, why are you going to, to the extremist? Why are you going to the extremist point of view as a as a as a as a way to? You would probably understand me if you just let me speak for one goddamn time. I apologize. I apologize. So by uh, if we apply your standard and say I should be knowing that I am doing something evil or oppressive because I'm doing something so bad that people react to me strongly, then we should also apply that same standard to Muslims who want to establish Islamic societies which are oppressive and authoritarian, and to Muslims which want to establish Isla Islamic societies where apostates like me are executed, and we should then say that they knowingly do something evil, which is why they should be punished for that. That's what I'm getting. One who's trying to establish that and where it's working. Tell, think, tell me one country. Tell me one country where where Islamic Sharia law is like the Islamic Sharia law that Sunnis. Should preach, I tell okay? you? Should I tell you one country that is uh, in which Islam plays a role in the government and which in which Islam is influential? No, not it plays a role in the government because even nowadays we could see the Christianity playing a role in the government in a in a state country like America. So tell me a country where okay, it's what, 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 100 what the... uh, theology. Uh, that, theocracy. Sorry, that is that is that is a ridiculous expectation to make. I don't know why. Don't why? Because the first, four, the first, the, the first caliphate, the first Islamic caliphate after Prophet Muhammad, that was a theocracy. That wasn't that okay. wasn't a political okay. state. Okay, let's take let's take him for let's take them for example. Let's take Muhammad for example. Muhammad established a society where uh, Islam should rule. It should be the government, right? The caliph the caliphs after him established a caliphate, which people now refer to as the Rashidun Caliphate, the rightly Correct. guided ones, which Correct. are an Islamic society which spread Islam by inviting people or otherwise fighting them and spreading Islam. Now, Islam right. rules uh, the society, right? People are then uh, under the moral laws of Islam and must fully obey it. But a lot of people are hurt by that so much that they would rather die than submit themselves to that. Which means how are you making that assumption? Which which means, uh, I'm sorry. Are you telling me that people uh, <laughs> that people lovingly said, "Oh, come, come and make no, us no, it's not about come take our country." Not whether it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't the fact that you're talking on a uh, on a general perspective like you have the voice for everyone that lived in those nations. i i like, don't i do I, not i never made such a claim are there people did people uh, resist did, did the certain, islamization did certain people resist yes yes but did they all put to death no okay 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 together. fantastic was never my point if you listen to me that was never ever my point you told but, me but you made it seem like it was an oppressive nation okay. when it was the, quite the opposite Yes, you are telling me that I am being oppressive by criticizing Islam, and the evidence for that is that I get death threats. And I'm telling you, but by but that brother, logic, I... by that logic, Islam should be, or those Muslim societies should be considered oppressive because they spread, but people resist. So that means when, if people resist, then that should be evidence that the Muslims are knowingly oppressing but people and committing evil. This is your right standard, now. not yeah, mine. you got to look at reality. Put, push everything oh to the God. side. you got to look at the reality. Someone is trying to impose a way of life at any point of time in reality. Even now, right nowadays, we're trying to, we're having a fight with Western level. Uh, uh, liberty mentality, uh, liberal mentality. So someone's always trying to impose a way. So why won't we have the right in this game of chess to play our moves like everyone else is playing our moves? Being a Muslim doesn't mean you're submissive to everybody. It means you submit it to God. And okay, in the it, way it, has, of it has nothing to do with the topic. We're jumping to, a, some, no, to no, something no. completely is, different it is, again. It is. See, the, to the, topic, the topic, the topic, topic was very. <laughs> The topic was whether I am knowingly committing evil or not. That is the topic. And yeah, brother, but it's hard for you to gauge what evil is when your sense of morality is very Exactly, subjective. exactly. Very I don't subjective. believe that it is evil to criticize Islam. I don't because believe you, that there is anything wrong with it. I don't believe that Islam is true. I don't believe that Islam do, is good. Do you agree? So how you can agree? I be judged by that standard then? Because I can go back to Futra, which is the natural aspect of the human being. I have, a th I have an easy question for you. There's a hundred thousand, hundred thousand man-made religions in the world, but there's one right religion, and that religion is peace. Do you oh, agree? Okay. Do you agree? No, I don't. That you don't agree even, that peace is the way. No, that's complete gibberish. I don't even. Okay, you want to talk? This is gibberish for you. But now let me hit you with some verses. 
the word sharia shara'a lakum min al-deen ma wassa bihi nuhan wal ladhi awhayna ilayka wa wa masayna bihi musa wa isa wa ibrahim wa musa wa isa min qabl naqimu al-deen wa la tatafarraqu fi kabru ala al-mushrikina ma tad'uhum alayh shara'a god inscribed to you uh, to you what he inscribed to noah what he inscribed to muhammad to abraham to moses and jesus to be one community abstaining one nation okay and do not do not divide and people who wants to cause division those are the criminals yeah, you and, and, by, and, and by your standards and by your standards that means we should impose islam because islam is what is peaceful and if we don't accept that then we are evil and i'm, I'm not that, saying we have that to is that is i mean i mean uh your it is, concept it is, of islam it is, is really, really funny man. It is really funny that you don't see the irony of this. Do you think Islam should play a role in the government? Do you think a society should be an Islamic society? Okay, that that means you want to impose Islam. Brother, it's the understanding of what Islam is. I'm not going why, what... Yeah, yeah, you see, Ridwan, this is... uh, Who are you calling on? Okay, so... You're saying, oh my God, who are you calling on? (laughs) It is it is how language works. It's a figure of speech. Oh, okay. I, I'm sorry. I'm but sorry if you have a difficulty understanding. Hold on one second. This is the pr- no. That, the that's point. that's not an There's argument. There's a point. There's a point. That. That is a There's the reason. One second, second. gentlemen, gentlemen, meaning. gentlemen. Hold on. Just to be sure that we can hear. I said, both. "Oh my God!" Therefore, Islam is true. See. No, you said, "Oh my God!" Therefore, you don't mean what you're saying. So when I'm telling you, you do not know what submission means. It's on the same thing. You think you understand what Islam is, but oh you don't. God. Okay, because, case in point, because, Islam is true because I said, oh my God, case no, closed. No. And you end of topic, I lost, Islam is true. I admit because I said, oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because naturally you believe oh in God. God. But anyways, what I'm trying to say is that something is a very con- simple concept. You're picking up and choosing certain things in the Quran that can be that can be answered to you, which you choose not to accept. But you're missing like a whole big portion of the Quran. When Moses is called a, a, a Muslim, uh, when uh, Abraham is called a Muslim, when when God's telling you to ponder about the Quran, uh, when when the, the when Jesus is literally asking his people, "Are you guys Muslim?" So, what's Muslim to you? What's Islam to you? Because if you want to just talk about how Shias and Sunnis look at the concepts of Islam, trying to protect protect I mean, sorry, protect their communities from outside influences. That's a whole different conversation. Okay, you what's the definition about, of Islam? You complained that an, a, a, a Saudi uh, preacher was arrested, right? Correct. What was because he arrested he, for? What does he believe in? What does he advocate for? He said that the people who are bringing in certain Western ideas and making concerts to show that how feminine men is an okay principle in our community, this is not what we've been taught, and this is against what we've been taught, and this is not something that we should be again uh, okay with. Fantastic. So, um, and and you feel very sad for this guy. You think this guy had the right ideas. He wanted to preserve an honest Islamic society. So let me just establish a few things and to check with you if you are um, if if you agree with that. Got to go to the. Uh, I've got to. Is this a, something that might fit in your closing statements? It doesn't have to, but otherwise, sure, yeah, you are sure. at that Whatever, point. Yeah, sure. Let's jump into the closing statements. Ladies and gentlemen, the Q&A is coming up pretty quick right after the closings. But first, we'll start with Muhammad with your closing statement. The clock is set for four minutes. The floor is all yours. I believe my opponent has a lot of hate and bigotry towards a concept that he doesn't understand. There are some valid points that he makes when how certain 21st century uh, uh, Muslims approach the idea of uh, Muslims and they have extremist point of view, which is not correct. But for the last 20 20 years after September 11, uh, my community has been undergoing a lot of demonizations. We're in a position that's very similar to the Jews pre-World War II that are right now concentration camps like they are in China are set up that would kill a bunch of Muslims most of the world wouldn't care because we have been doing the nice for the last 20 years. You're adding to the hate. You're not helping it. But you as a person don't understand what Muslim Muslim is or an Islam is. Because when I'm asking you, how is Jesus a Muslim? How is Moses a Muslim? How is Abraham a Muslim? When the word definition of Islam, you don't know, which is submission to God. So sitting there talking about political differences and how we're trying to save our communities from certain influences that we don't agree with, you're sitting there and buckling up real quick and you're going to certain things that don't matter in this conversation. Because the matter is, people are getting hurt. We are in a very difficult position in the world and the same administration that went and bombed Iraq saying that they had weapons of mass destructions failed to produce the weapons of mass destructions that's the same administrations that said that a bunch of Muslims went and destroyed the towers on this very day 20 21 years ago and we've been under that radar and under that gun for the last 21 years and for you to expect us not to, to be harassed and not to say something about it and not to act in extreme ways when we don't have the resources when we don't have that certain political power and this way in the world for us not to react to people who are 
hurting us and criticizing things that we verily love. It's not about insulting our mothers. It's not insulting, a, a, you're insulting literally the word of God to us. And, and whatever, if someone calls himself God, he's saying that, he's technically saying that I'm worshiping him. And if you're saying that what I'm saying is false, that's fine. But to you to sit there and make a mission about it, to destroy us and what we believe in. And at this point, you are an enemy and this is how it goes. This is what the reality is. And welcome to the world, my friend. We'll good, jump good job advocating for terrorism. We'll jump into the closing statement for apostate prophet. And want to remind you folks, a couple of things in particular, we hope you feel welcome no matter what walk of life you're from, whether you be Muslim, atheist, you name it. Thrilled to have you here. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. And with that, we're going to go into AP's closing statement. First of all, I want to thank uh, Mohammed very much for uh, briefly um, advocating and justifying uh, Islamic terrorism for all of us uh, here in front of our uh, audience. I hope everybody can uh, sit here and look behind the disgusting face of playing the victim and see the advocacy for Islamic terrorism, for Islamic violence, which should be eradicated in this world. Uh, yes, I'm a Same bigot. I'm a, I'm a bigot, as you can see. I'm apparently a bigot, therefore Islam is uh, true. Uh, the closing here was all about a political appeal to uh, please feel sorry for us because we are good. If you don't feel sorry for us, then we might uh, hurt you and kill you. Sorry, but that's just what we do. Uh, unfortunately, it has nothing to do with the topic, which is, is Islam true? Maybe we should have uh, agreed to discuss the topic. Um, is Islamic terrorism justified? In which case, my opponent would probably say uh, yes, and I would say no. Or he would say no, because uh, when we do it, it's not terrorism. Uh, but the, to the actual topic uh, of whether is Islam true? Oh, yeah, despite the fact, uh, I also want to point out the obvious here. Uh, he said that um, he talked about extremism and how, how uh, we have a misunderstanding of Islam and all of that, um, whereas he clearly advocates for a society in which Islamic law is established and all the people he, out here uh, who are free, who go for individual freedoms, who enjoy individual freedoms, would be oppressed and po possibly put to death in brutal ways. That's what he advocates for. That is uh, the original Saudi Saudi Arabian uh, tradition that the Saudi Arabian preacher wants to go back to, for which he was arrested because he is inviting these stupid concepts of freedom and liberalism and all that. Uh, the West is heaven for Muslims. The Islamic world is darkness for everyone who is not a Muslim and also very much for Muslims, which is why uh, half of Muslims want to flee even if it is by uh, illegal immigration. Yes, I'm serious. Look at uh, the recent polls by Arab bar uh, Barometer. So. Get out of us. But when it comes, but when it comes to the actual topic of whether Islam is true or not, we can very clearly see that Islam is false. We have established it here. Uh, <laughs> Muhammad said ridiculous things, the Quran says ridiculous things, none of it can be justified. Muhammad made a prophecy that the world would end soon, it obviously didn't end, and uh, it cannot be uh, opposed by a Muslim apologist who instead sits here and wants to justify violence in the name of Islam. I think that says it all very much. Thank you, everybody, and stay away from well, Islam. Well, by the way, uh, that was that, a closing, that was a closing that, speech. That, 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 that was a closing I, speech. I gotta go into the Q&A. I do have to, thank you. 